Hi there, and thanks so much for joining me for another video. I'm Erin Eno, and today we're having fun painting these simple two-color abstract florals. So grab your paints and let's get started. Today I'm using my Bao Hong Academy Cold Press Watercolor Paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I'm just doing a little painting today. It's roughly five and a quarter by seven and a half. I have my Royal Talons Van Gogh watercolors in my palette, a jar of water and a paper towel. And for brushes, I have a Curry's um, size six round in their 2400 series. And I have two Princeton snap rounds, one in a size two and one in a size zero. I'm not sure if I'll be using the zero, but we'll see how that goes. And yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so basically what you wanna do is pick two colors that kind of complement each other. I'm picking um, a purple, which I've made up from permanent blue violet and a little bit of ultramarine deep, just cause I'd want it not too purpley. Whoops, almost went into the wrong blue. Okay, so I'm using purple and indigo, okay? And you can pick any colors, like I say, any colors that complement each other. Um, I've done some with yellow and gray. I've done some with a, a green and blue. So just try some different colors out on a scrap piece of paper um, and just till you find the color combo you want. Um, but I'm using this purple that I've made and straight up indigo. So all you wanna do is go into your main color with um, your larger brush. I'm using my size five, six, six. I always call it a five, I don't know why. I always write what paper it is on there when I trim it and I forgot to erase it. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to take that purple and just do some dots. Not dots, kind of like those little blobs of that purple. Okay, then I'm gonna clean off my brush and just go in with plain water. And I'm just gonna start dragging this out to make really random organic petal shapes, okay? Don't try to think of flowers too much. You want these to be really random. Okay, so you're not looking for a perfect petal shape. And you can do three petals, you can do four. I would hesitate to do five. I think that would be a bit too much and kind of take away from the abstract feel, okay? So there's my first flower, that's all I'm doing to that. And I'm gonna jump into the purple again and do another one over here, pretty close to that guy. Again, just putting down some blobs. Maybe I'll do four blobs on this time. Maybe I'll do three blobs, but try to spread it out into four petals because it really doesn't matter. Okay, again, just going in with that water and just kind of dragging it out. As it gets to the outside, I'm going a little lighter, but just really kind of wobbly shapes for these petals. Just try not to think about it too much. See here, I'm even, out of just the three blobs, I'm gonna spread this out into four petals. And it's running into the first flower that I did, okay? And then before it gets too dry, I'm just gonna tap in a little bit more of that purple. You can even come up 
the sides on some of these petals that you did just to get a little more tone in there. But I don't want to overdo it because I want to keep them nice and soft. You can go to the outer edges and just do a thin line if your brush lets you. If you want to go to a smaller brush to do some lines on the ends, that's that's all good. Okay, so that purple is going to bleed out. And I'm just going to drag a little bit more of that color out. Just to heavy up some of those petals. But I don't want to overdo it because I don't want them to start going flat. Okay, and then I'll take the purple again and maybe we'll throw one down here. We'll do four petals on this guy. You can even do two petals and it'll just look like a side view or something. Remember, this is this is abstract, so it really doesn't matter. Like I say, the only thing I wouldn't do is throw a ton of petals down because then it's just going to go kind of blobby on you. As I say that, this one now looks like five petals and I didn't mean it to, but it's okay. Then I'm going to pop one a little further over here to balance things out a little bit. Way over here. I'll do four petals on this one. Then I'm going to go back into the purple and just tap a little bit into this guy because he's quite pale. But I don't want to put too much in because I want it to remain soft. And you can go back into these guys. Well, they're, they're dry, so I'm not going to... Actually, I will tap just a little bit more in here. and just wet it to have it bleed out a little bit. This one's going rogue on me. It's getting a little carried away. So I'm just sopping up that water just to stop that bleed. I want it to bleed out a little more but I want it to be a little more controlled and then maybe we will do one last guy down here 
I'm just trying to think if I should do this one kind of on its side a little bit. Yeah, let's have him kind of facing the side a little. Just for something different. So you can see you're just kind of pushing that paint around, dragging it and pushing it around. Okay. Do this petal facing down a little bit. Maybe what I'll do is drag a little bit of purple there to look like the underneath of it. I'm going to go in with just a tiny amount. And that was pretty wet, so it's bleeding a lot. So I'm going to stop that by just sopping up some of that water. And I think I just want to do one more little one. Maybe not. Maybe we'll do like a little bud guy up here. Just a teeny one. It hasn't quite bloomed. Just a little something up here. So this one's bleeding out quite a bit still. So I'm going to sop some of that up. Okay, then I'm going to switch to my smaller brush. And we're going to, I'm going to use my size two. I don't think I will need to use my zero, but we'll see. So now I'm going to go into my indigo and I'm just using straight indigo. Maybe I didn't need that much, but anyway, so you're going to take your smaller brush and you're going to tap it in. To these flowers that you first did. Now I had gone back into the middle there so it was still wet but usually when I do them they would be dry and then you would clean off, rinse off your smaller brush, just run it along the edge of your jar to get most of the water off and just roll it through that color and drag it out. So it's not really, I mean it's kind of bleeding but you're also dragging it to where you want it to go and if you find it's too strong just pick some of it up Okay, so I don't know if you can see how I'm kind of rolling my brush through that indigo. And just kind of rolling and pulling it out. And if you get edges that are too harsh that you don't like, just smooth them out. But usually it's kind of just best to just let it do what it's going to do. And I'm just going to go tap a little bit more and go just right in the center of that one. Okay, again, I'm going to rinse off my brush. Just take a little bit of water off so it's not sopping wet and roll and drag. Just like that. It's just adding some different tones to some of the petals and some interest to them. And you're not really trying to be all that fussy. Just let it kind of do what it wants to do. Okay, so now we'll go down to this one. So I'm going to tap it in the middle and I'm putting a fair amount in the middle because of course I'm going with a wet brush and dragging it out so you want a decent amount of paint in there okay and then I just kind of roll and drag your brush out
And then just to keep these kind of organic, just clean your brush and just kind of stop the bleeds when you feel they've gone as far as you want them to. Okay, so you're just basically playing around. So you're just adding a little bit of depth and interest to the center of these flowers. And then we'll go down to, I think this guy was the one that we did next. Now he's going to have um, like a backside view. Okay, so I'm not trying to make him look like a four petal flower or anything. Okay, and then I'm just going to deepen up the middle and then we'll go on to this one over here. Again, just rolling your brush through as you pull it out. You hear me going back to my water a lot, right? So that's um, when I'm cleaning off my brush and just coming in with some more water. And you have to do this with a small brush because if you come in with a big brush, you're just going to put way too much water down. Okay, so the last little guy we have to do is our little kind of bud thing that we did up here. I don't want to soak this one too much. I just want to have a little bit of the indigo come up. Okay, so you can see as these are drying, the centers are getting a little light. So that's when I like to go back into that second dark color. Whatever you've picked. I should have mentioned that yes, the second color that you pick should be darker than your main flower petals because the second color is going to be used for our kind of stems as well. Okay. And if it looks too harsh, you can always go in and just bleed that last hit of your second color but I don't want to pull all the indigo out because I do want it quite dark in there. So I'm going to switch to my size zero brush only because I want to do some little sepals on this guy, on this little bud. And I want to make sure they don't come out really big and my hand doesn't feel that steady today. Okay. So with that second color, whoops, I also don't like what's going on here. It's gone a little too harsh. So I'm going to bleed some of that in to go out. So with my second color and my small brush, now I'm just going to go through and we're not doing stems off of each flower. We're just kind of do, doing almost viney, vine like lines, just kind of intertwine these and join them together. So just put these wavy lines down and you can see mine aren't very fine which is why I wanted to use my size zero I'm gonna make this one come up and down And you can have breaks in your lines. Just add a little bit of interest to those. 
as well. And then you can even have some just coming out just because. The problem with using such a small brush is you have to keep going back into your paint, but it's all good. So just do squiggles anywhere you want. And you can also go in if you want and just do some really fine lines on the outer edges of some of your uh, petals that you did. Try not to overdo it. Just um, do a little bit at a time and then step back and look at it. Because you don't want to go, oh, I've just gone that one step too far. Okay, and you can also just put in some dots. Put in some kind of smeared lines of that blue as well, if you want, just for something to do. That was way more indigo than I wanted down on my paper. Kind of a nice effect though, a little bit of a happy accident. I'm good with it. Maybe not that good with it. Just try to pick a little bit of it up. Maybe do another kind of blob like that over here. And you can even just do kind of double lines on some of these viney like things. It's just basically playtime. But I don't want to overdo it, so I say that a lot. Except I do want to bring this indigo out just a little bit. Just a little bit. And then where it's faded on these guys, I'm just gonna go back in, tap a little more. It's always surprising how light, even a really dark color will end up being once it's dry. But that's it. I don't want to play around anymore because I think sometimes less is more. So there you go. There are your fun two color abstract flowers. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful or just enjoyable to watch and I hope you'll give it a try. So that's it for today. Take care and I will see you next time.